Hi friends, Ryan Lestranger with another Monday word. My Monday word for you today is break demons of fear connected to religion. We're kind of in a vein teaching on the religious spirit. And I believe one of the really toxic uh, traits connected to religious spirit is fear. And fear is so immobilizing. It causes you to have paralysis of creativity, paralysis of prayer, paralysis of progress. It is absolutely one of the most calamitous things you can get involved in. So let's talk about this. 1 John 4, and beginning in verse 18, I want to read through verse 21. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love we love because he first loved us if someone says i love god and hates his brother he's a liar for the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love god whom he has not seen and this commandment we have from him that one who loves god should love his brother also now there's a mouthful right there but let me begin with this love is a person His name is Jesus. Jesus embodied perfect love. And we see it time and time again. So the the basis for really getting set free from fear is is through Jesus Christ and relationship with him. And that's what religious uh, spirits are all about. Blocking real identity, blocking authentic relationship. Uh, You break demons of fear by embracing and understanding the love of God. You see, it is the love of God that sets you free from fear. When you understand what Jesus did for you at Calvary and you understand the totality of of his sacrifice it it frees you from the spirit of fear uh so you embrace you break those demons by embracing the love of god now what this is going to require is deliverance from what i call religious thinking the reality is this that the religious spirit dominates our thought life understand this scripture tells us that strongholds are systems of thought so when there's been a demonic activity or operation in our life there are thoughts and imaginations attached to that. Now, an imagination is a series of thoughts which paints a vivid picture of a conclusion. If I'm having an imagination about going to the movies, perhaps I'm thinking about the sound of uh, of the booming surround sound. I'm thinking about the vivid nature of the imagery on the screen. I'm smelling the butter that is on the popcorn. Some of you, you, your mouth is watering right now. Why? That's called the power of imagination. I'm seeing the end of the thing when I'm thinking about it from the beginning. And so what demons do, they create create these kinds of imaginations. And so we become inhibited in our creativity. We become inhibited in our prayers. We become inhibit, inhibited in our relationships with other people because of the presence of fear and the religious spirit. People are sitting on phenomenal opportunities, ideas. They're missing Kairos moments because they're fearful. Religious thinking, it creates what I like to call a barter system, which says, okay, God, I'm going to do this for you and then you do this for me. Now, let me be clear. The Bible tells us None of us can escape the law called sowing and reaping, that we are going to receive harvest on seeds we've sown. But aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus that eradicates previous mistakes. God was so serious about this. He said, your sin is cast into the sea of forgetfulness. So there really is a deliverance or a freedom that I don't have to get everything I deserve. And I'm thankful for that. But as it pertains to our natural lives, our spiritual lives, we have the ability to sow seed and then receive a harvest, good, bad, and ugly. Uh, What we don't do is we don't barter with God. We don't negotiate and say, well, God, you know, I prayed for 30 days. So therefore I'm, I'm better than this person that just got saved last week. That is the absolute manifestation of a religious spirit. So this spirit and this fear-based thinking does not understand identity. It doesn't understand the security and the peace that comes through what I call positional grace, that we have grace provided for us, not because of really anything we did, but because of the totality of Jesus' sacrifice. Let me say it this way. The religious spirit makes you think or convinces you that you have to add something to what Jesus did. You don't. Now, here's where deception comes in and false teaching, in my opinion, on grace. You don't, uh, you don't escape the need for a savior. You don't escape the need for faith. And the Bible's clear, faith without works is dead. So some people think, well, I'm under grace. I, I just don't have to do anything. That's partially true and wholly incorrect because when I have faith, I'm going to have a response 
or an action connected to it. But here's the thing. I am not measuring out my deserving of God's love by what I do or don't do. That's predicated on him and not on me. So what faith does, it grabs a hold of what God already did and appropriates it for me. That's the whole of the teaching. So what do I do now, Ryan? I'm, I'm gripped with this. I see this in my life. Well, let's talk about some practicalities. You need to cast out spirits of fear. Demons need to be commanded to go. And demons do not understand uh, intimidation. They don't understand sort of politeness. You know, I, I remember being in a service one time and it may seem funny. It's funny to me. A lady said, we're going to do nice deliverance. And I thought, I, I don't know what that is. Demons are violent. They're aggressive. They're trespassers. And so demons need to be spoken to with authority. And when you know who you are and whose you are, you can say, I command the spirit of fear, go from me. Well, I said that last week. Do I need to keep saying that? You need to keep saying it until that spirit quits showing up because the kingdom of God is voice activated. So you cast out spirits of fear. You bind up spirits of fear. The gospel tells us whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. This means we forbid the operation of. So in prayer as a believer that has the authority of Christ, I bind the spirit of fear. I bind fearful thinking in Jesus name. I speak the opposite of what I may be feeling in the moment because I'm exercising faith. Faith is a muscle. It has to be exercised. Then you have to renew your mind. That's not a one-time thing. You've got to chew on the scripture with the digestive system of the mind. You need to get scriptures that speak of love and acceptance. Why? Because Jesus is the word become flesh. To know him is to know the word. And finally, to break free from the spirit of fear associated with religion. You, this sounds so elementary, but you've got to spend consistent time at the feet of Jesus. You've got to become a worshiper. And if you don't know how to worship God, I'm not talking about on Sunday morning, Saturday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday morning, online church. No, no, I'm talking about you in your privacy of your home, your car, wherever, worshiping God. Begin with gratitude. Thanksgiving is the gateway to worship. You find where God's been faithful. Maybe nothing worked out the way I thought it should, but God, I still have breath. Maybe I lost my home and I'm not sure where to go, but God had a friend that let me save them. God, thank you for, for the kindness of this friend. What, whatever kind of dark, stormy, cloudy skies are over your head, you can find a bright spot. And you begin by focusing on the nature and the character of the goodness of God and you begin to thank him for that. Then you begin to just pour your heart out. That can mean your pain and your brokenness and worship him, adore him, call him your Lord, your savior, your healer, your deliverer. And if you do these things, I guarantee you, you're gonna break the shackles of fear. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your word today that perfect love casts out fear. I thank you for my friends that are watching this word. I pray in the authority of the name of Jesus that they are free from fear. I command the spirit of fear to go from them, to go from their minds, to go from their bodies in the authority of Jesus' name, fear of death, fear of the dark, fear of people, fear of crowds, fear of disease, every kind of fear. We resist you and bind you. You said you've not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And we speak over our mind that our mind is at perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.